Hi everyone, my name is Manon Reaper. I am the editor in chief of Film Inquiry, and today I'm going to talk to you a little about how to write a review, a film review. If you would like to be a critic, one of the first things that you're going to have to learn is how to write a proper review. I personally have a lot of experience with writing reviews, I've written hundreds. Uh, but more importantly, I've edited thousands. We have around 200 contributors on Film Inquiry, and I'm responsible for publishing all the stuff that we put out. So I have written, edited, and read my fair share of film reviews. Since December 2016, Film Inquiry is a Rotten Tomatoes approved publication. That means that all of our reviews are counts towards their tomato meter, and you'll see them among the critics' reviews. I've also written a book on film analysis, and I will link to that somewhere in this screen. And in that book I describe how you um, can analyze movies and what kind of steps you need to take during watching and after watching to make a proper analysis of a movie. So, today I'm going to talk a little about how to write a proper review. Um, I will be talking about structure, when and how much of the film's plot to give away, uh, and I will give you some good tips to keep in mind while you're writing. I'm going to start with structure. Structure of any article, be it some essay, a column, um, a review, obviously, um, an academic article, basically anything that you write, structure is very, very important. You start with an introduction where you can begin with an anecdote or something related to the film just to prime the reader's mind, to get them into the story, um, basically just introduce them to your narrative. You can start with telling a little about some of the things that went into making the movie or write something about the makers of the film or maybe you do an early introduction of the plot of the film, um, but basically introduce your article and what you may also want to include, if it's not already clear, is what the purpose of your article is going to be. Then there's the middle of your article. In this section, you're going to make your arguments for or against this film, you're going to uh, discuss some more of the plot, etc, etc. And then there's the conclusion. In the conclusion, it's very important not to introduce new information. I see it happen quite often that writers will basically put stuff that should have been in their middle, arguments for or against a film, in their conclusion. No, no, this is not the way to do it. You basically summarize what you have said before, but you do not introduce any new information. You can end your article with a final thought, a final note, and what we do is usually ask the reader a question to um, initiate some discussion about the film. Now, the important question is, how much of the film's plot are you going to give away in your review? Some people tend to give away too much, which you obviously know as spoilers, but you probably don't want to do this. So, it's important to give an idea of what the movie is about, but you don't want to give away so much that people don't actually need to see the movie anymore if they haven't already seen it. So what I usually do and what I look for is that, that people only introduce about the first half of the film or up to the end of the first act of the film. That way you have set up what the film is about, but you don't give away so much that people don't need to watch it anymore. You will also want to name some names, mention the actors involved, mention the director involved, but also mention perhaps the director of photography and maybe some other names if they are relevant. So introducing the plot, introducing the filmmakers involved is usually something you do in the middle of the article. You can already start with a little bit of the plot in your introduction, but the meat of it should be in the middle of the article. As for the middle itself, this is the part where you are going to make your arguments for or against a film you are going to structure a narrative where you are going to convince the reader whether the film was good or bad. What I will often see with less experienced writers is that they will say so-and-so's performance was really good or um, their performance was really bad and good or bad is the way they will describe the uh, performances. This is very elementary. 
You should not describe anything with just the words good or bad or anything um, as elementary as that. So, fine, um, it was okay, away with that. You will want to describe what these performances did with you, what kind of emotions that they elicit, um, and in any case, you will want to describe why it is good or bad. The same counts for the cinematography, for instance. Sometimes I'll see people write, the cinematography was lovely, and I'm like, but why? It is very important to establish why cinematography is important. Again, what did the cinematography accomplish? What, what type of cinematography did they use? What special techniques? Show your knowledge about filmmaking. If you do not have the knowledge about filmmaking, read up about filmmaking. Read up about wide shots or close-ups or, or camera movement or anything. Read up and use it in your analysis and in your arguments about why cinematography is good. And perhaps I see this happen even more often, is that writers do not understand what direction is. So I'm not going to delve into what direction is, but you should know this if you want to be a critic. So you can't say, oh, so-and-so directed this film so well. For me, that only establishes that you have no idea what direction is. Basically, it counts for any element within a film. Production design, film scoring, sound design, anything, anything. You should know what went into making this movie. You should understand what kind of roles people play. There's usually hundreds of people involved in making a movie. For you to say it's just good or, oh, this was so bad, it is actually a bit of an insult. Really focus on highlighting details of film that you like and that you didn't like so much, but explain why to your reader and showcase some of that knowledge about film that you have. What you also want to do in this middle part of your review is compare the film uh, to films that the director has done before. If it is a director's debut, you might want to um, compare it to films that are similar, which is actually something you want to do anyway. It's important to see a film in context. Usually a film does not exist in a vacuum. The, the filmmakers were inspired by other filmmakers and other films. So it's very important to know what films are canon for this genre or whatever type of film that you're watching or reviewing. The point is, to properly review a film, you will need some, well, pretty extensive knowledge about film if you want to write a good review. So, if you haven't seen a lot of old movies, you will not be able to compare it to other movies. These filmmakers will have seen these older movies. They know what they're doing. So, to get to their level, you will need some of the same knowledge. What I personally also really like to see in film reviews is some deeper analysis of a film. The, this usually entails some discussion of how did they achieve certain aspects of their films? How did they elicit certain feelings through the use of color, for instance, or the use of music or sound? And what, what did the filmmaker want to achieve? What was their message? You should always try to understand, anyway, what their message is. And you might also want to compare it to what is happening in real life. For instance, this is why I am such a big fan of dystopian science fiction, because even though it's set in the future, it is always a discussion of what is happening in the now. Or it is a discussion of certain fears we have. It is a discussion of what if we don't do anything about our current situations, what might the consequences be? So dystopian science fiction is a great one if you want to practice your film analysis. And I am expecting that we will get a lot more dystopian science fiction in the next few years. Next is consistency. You will want to be very consistent in the way you write. Take the structure, take your ideas about film and be consistent in applying them. That way the readers can get to know you and like you. They will start seeking you out for your reviews. And if your articles are pleasant to read as well, people will be more likely to return. Finally, 
I have a few tips that uh, I have gained throughout my years as editor. As I said, I have edited thousands of reviews, so I think I can say I have some experience. If you want to be professional, if you want to come across as a professional, your grammar has to be absolutely perfect, especially if you are writing for your own blog and do not have an editor. Do not make it it errors. Do not. Please don't. <laughs> this is one that returns the most often for me and it can be edited so easily. Just do a quick page search for both it and it and you will find the ones that you did wrong even though you're a native speaker or not. In fact, the people who aren't native speakers usually do it better than the native speakers. I don't know what it is, but it happens. Do a quick page search, don't get it wrong, end of story. Next, another thing that's very important is to guide your reader. So this is also something that I often see, is that writers are taking shortcuts. They do not explain how they get to their opinion. They assume that their reader has a certain type of knowledge. That may not always be the case. Always write as if your reader is less informed than you are, which is usually the case. Sometimes not, and then you can have a very interesting discussion if they know more, for instance. But in general, you should guide your reader through your narrative. Make sure to explain why you're making certain choices or uh, have certain opinions, or if something specific in the film uh, created a certain feeling in you, tell them why. Be explicit, and I mean that not in the swearing sense, but in the using a lot of words to explain what you mean sense. Don't be afraid to use more words. And that's also a trend that I've seen on the internet, is for people to use fewer and fewer words. All it does is make articles dumber. It's less work, but it also means that your article is dumber. Sorry. Using more words allows you to explain things better, making for a more well-rounded article. So don't be afraid of using more words. But please don't be repetitive. <laughs> and for a final tip, and this is an editing tip, before you hit that submit or publish button, read your work out loud. This may sound a bit silly, but when you do a final read-through of your work, make sure to read it out. Even if you whisper, that's fine. The, the trick is, is that you use different parts of your brain, which will help you find issues in your grammar and flow, because you're not just using your eyes, you are actually taking in your material with more multiple parts of your brain. And your ears, for instance, are more sensitive to hearing issues in style and flow, which greatly, greatly improves your writing. So that is definitely my tip. Read it out loud. I did it for my uh, academic thesis, which was 130 pages. Read it all out loud, and it was so much better for it. So those were my tips. If you have any questions at all, please just um, post in the comments and I will respond uh, to your questions. And don't forget to subscribe if you would like to be kept up to date to my videos, but also to Laura's here or here, one of her writers, Laura, she just started a new series on our Film Inquiry YouTube channel which is called Decipher and I simply love her videos and she has got so much more in store for you and also make sure to go to our website filminquiry.com and check out some of our amazing articles and two of our other com contributors, Jay and Mike, are doing a podcast that you may also want to check out and they are going to do some post-Oscars discussion which I'm really eager to hear. So I hope you enjoy our content and I hope to see you next time. See ya!